Though Tesla doesn't advertise it, you can allegedly get a Model 3 for around $35,000. We should know because we got roasted by the Tesla community when we said the base price was actually closer to $40,000. Also, we know because we bought one. And in this video, we're gonna show you what we got and the process it took to actually get it. Before we do, hit subscribe and visit Edmunds.com to find your next perfect car. The confusion stems from the fact that Tesla's own website says the true cost of the least expensive Model 3 is around $41,000. Now for true cost, we're gonna say that includes destination fees that you have to pay, but excludes potential gas savings and the financial incentives that vary from state to state. So how do you get the $35,000 model? That's what we wanted to find out. So a few of us on staff just pretended we were normal customers. We went to Tesla stores and talked to Tesla sales reps over the phone and in online chat rooms. What we found out is that this so-called off-menu process is just kind of a thinly veiled personalization or customization program. It's how you get the spoiler removed on your Model S and it's how you get the Model X in a six seat configuration with a center console. So what about this $35,000 Model 3? Well, the Tesla reps that we talked to told us that it actually starts life as a standard range plus car. Then Tesla disables some features, reduces the range, and decontents the interior to make it a standard range car. Tesla also tells us that you can add back some of these features during the course of ownership. So there's the car. And it actually looks pretty good for being a base model. It has 18 inch wheels and it's got this white paint, which is the only free color choice you get with the off menu Model 3. Next, let's take a look at some of the features that are and aren't different with this particular car. Biggest exterior difference. They look like fog lights, they aren't fog lights. The other big mechanical difference is the stereo system. If you look through these speaker grills, you can see speakers. But if you hop inside, turn on the stereo and put the fader all the way to the rear, there's nothing coming out of these speakers. I suspect that's because if you pull this trim away, here's where the amplifier and subwoofer would be on a normal Model 3, but there's nothing here except this black piece of plastic. What do the kids say? My, my much younger cameraman says there's the boom boom bap and there's none, none back here. Okay, boomer. The other thing we're missing, horror of horrors, are the floor mats. No jokes, there's just, there's just no floor mats. Let's talk about some of the features that you may be surprised you still get in this car. And we were surprised by one of them and that's traffic-based navigation with satellite imagery. We were surprised because the Tesla reps we talked to said that just wasn't available in this car. And it turns out it is available for 30 days, after which point you have to pay $10 a month to get it back in a group of features Tesla calls premium connectivity. We'll probably be doing that. You also get a dash cam, you still get sentry mode, and never mind that little error there, it just means we have the wrong USB dongle plugged in. You still get power adjusting heated front seats that are really comfortable, and unfortunately you still get piano black trim in the center console, and I'll show you why that's terrible by simulating a week's worth of use right now. It's gross. So what software features are you missing? Well, range is one thing. Uh, this car has an advertised range of 220 miles, but because Tesla recommends you charge the batteries to 90%, that leaves you with 198 miles or so. Let's just call it 200 miles of effective range, which isn't too bad if you have close, consistent access to a charger. The other thing you lose out on is autopilot and full self-driving. Instead of smart cruise control, you have dumb cruise control that works the traditional way. You pull the stock down twice and adjust the speed once you're over 30 miles an hour to match the flow of traffic. I actually kind of prefer that. But if we so desire to get full self-driving and autopilot through the handy Tesla app, we can by paying quite a sum of money. Before we start talking about the buying process, we can already make some quick comparisons with this car against the 2017 Model 3 we had in our long-term fleet. We put about 20,000 miles on that car and we have 1,100 or so on this one right now. Immediately, we can tell you that these seats are much better, both in terms of construction and the material they wrap the seats with. It's just a more comfortable place to sit. The interior is quieter and the whole car is better assembled. Tesla is getting better at building these things. Lastly, it rides better too. But now let's walk you through the buying process. So is this off the menu Model 3 really $35,000? If you look at the Monroney, yes. And then you have to add the dock and destination fee for $1,200 or so. But technically, yeah, it's 35 grand. So yay Tesla. And it seems like a pretty strong deal so far. We really have enjoyed driving this thing. Unfortunately, the buying process wasn't as appealing. 
Our goal was to trade in our 2017 Model 3 Standard Range Plus. Tesla has a really nifty trade-in process that you can start online. You just submit details, photos, and poof, you get a price. Ours was $38,000. That was great. It meant we could transform our 2017 Model 3 into a 2020 Model 3. We made the order in early November because all the Tesla salespeople were recommending we get our order in as early as possible so we could take delivery before December 31st so we could keep the $1,875 tax benefit that was going to expire in 2020. It was a major selling point that never happened. Come December, we're anticipating delivery and have to reappraise our Model 3 because we're still driving the car, as you would, and we exceeded the mileage and date limits for the original appraisal because we're still waiting for our new car to be built. We got appraised at $35,500. We lost nearly three grand in value. So we parked the car for the rest of the month while we waited for our new car to be built. And that's a luxury most consumers don't have. On December 17th, we received an email telling us to choose a day for a potential delivery. One of the options was Christmas Day. We didn't pick that, but we made our selections and replied back. We didn't hear anything for another 10 days, so we replied to Tesla on December 27th asking, hey, what's the deal with our car? The rep emails us and says, hey, there's no car attached to your account yet, but there's still a good chance we could take delivery before the new year. Unfortunately, on December 31st at 12.06 in the morning, we finally get word that the factory was unable to build our car. We don't hear anything until January 14, when Tesla puts an appointment on our calendar for delivery on the 16th. So that tax credit, gone, and there's nothing we can do about it. Tesla doesn't offer anything to compensate, not even an apology. And look, we get the end of the year is a busy time. People need vacations, so do we. The issue we have is that Tesla used this as a major selling point and was unable to deliver on it. Look, we're car reviewers, we're car critics, but we're also Tesla customers. This is the fourth one we've owned. We even have two pre-orders on vehicles that don't exist yet. We're yeah, scratch that. Immediately after filming this, we got word that our Model Y was close to delivery. So make that only one new model that doesn't quite exist yet. And now back to the video. We're brand faithful diehards, right? We put our money where our collective mouth is. And there's a lot we like about Tesla. Some of the processes around trade-in and delivery are really cool. The cars themselves can be excellent. There's a lot of welcome attributes here that you can't get from traditional automakers. But the buying process isn't always smooth for car shoppers. That's all behind us now. We're looking forward to running this in our long-term fleet for the next year. And uh, scratch this too. Look forward to this Model 3 getting replaced by our new Model Y very soon. Check our website for more updates there and stay tuned on this channel for more about this car. Make sure to hit like and subscribe and visit edmunds.com to find your next perfect car.